As we were assembling the S71 Oldsmobile, it became more and more apparent that we were putting a lot of power to the tires and the stock 10-bolt Oldsmobile rear axle assembly probably wasn't going to be up to the task. Uh, it was in decent condition, but we were just afraid of grenading it on the first drive after we fire up this turbo engine. So uh, we elected to get a hold of Curry Enterprises and obtain one of their crate rear axle assemblies for a bunch of different reasons. Uh, one of which is that they sell uh, pre-made housings that are already cut to the right length and have the proper control arm mounts to fit just about any American muscle car, including our 71 Olds. The process of removing the original 10 bolt from the car was pretty simple, uh, largely because the car wasn't fully assembled yet, so we didn't have to worry about the drive shaft or some of the other things like the, uh, the brake lines and whatnot. But, um, you unbolt the control arms and carefully lower the rear end and, and bring it out of the car. The new Curry rear axle housing comes in bare steel, so we did a little prep work and painted that a satin black uh, to match the underside of the body of the S71. As far as modifications to the housing are concerned, um, you might have to do something different to get your brake line tabs where you want them to hold the brake lines to the rear axle. We always make new hard lines on these, so we ran those the way we wanted to. And then, um, really that's about it. Curry takes care of everything else. It's all finished well, that it's all ready to rock. The center we used was a nodular iron Curry 9 Plus unit. So here on the bench, we have a Curry 9 Plus center section uh, assembled by them, which is nice. When you buy one of these things, it comes already set up, and you can see that there's a, a test pattern in the, the uh, the teeth to show you the ring and pinion engagement and all that nonsense. And you can see that this is a, uh, this is their casting, um, evidenced by the 9 Plus logo, but this is a nodular iron uh, race case, as I mentioned before. And the reason for having the nodular iron and the increased strength ribs and all of this extra stuff is because as this operates, even in a stock version, the drive shaft turns the pinion yoke here, and then that in turn engages the gear, which turns the ring gear, which turns the differential unit here, and then your axles are attached here, and they turn the wheels. It's pretty simple. But when you start to apply more and more power to this pinion yoke, okay, and at the same time, when you have a stickier tire outside, drag radial, drag slick, even just a wide street tire, it becomes harder to turn this and, and you know, the, the tires are effectively putting more resistance back on this center section. And what happens is, put a lot of power to this, this pinion gear inside the case tries to climb up the ring gear. And that is why you need all this additional strength in this case, because it needs to resist and, and keep that pinion gear in the right place. And when you think about when they set this up, the uh, procedure is to um, measure the depth of the pinion gear as it's in relation to the ring gear in you know thousandths of an inch. So you want to get that super super precise. And now imagine the effect of you know 500 or or 750 or a thousand foot pounds spinning this thing with a big sticky tire under a heavy car. What that's going to do to your thousandths of an inch level of precision if this case is allowed to flex at all. And interestingly enough, the nodular case versus the stock, you know, basic, what they call gray iron case, the main difference is the, the original stuff is actually more brittle, okay? Um, you've seen broken cast iron. You can take a sledgehammer and smash it and a big piece will fly right off. It's very, very strong, but it has no elasticity. Nodular iron, people think nodular iron is so much stronger but in reality, it has some graphite uh, inclusions in the cast, which makes it flexible. It actually makes it uh, resilient, so that when you do apply all that power to it, it will um, shift and come back into its original position, rather than just explode and shatter like the very rigid stock iron. So that is the reason, plus the, the nodular casings do have extra strength ribs added into them in the design. 
So these are some of the reasons why a Curry 9 Plus is a stronger rear end than a stocker. Plus the added benefits that everything is new in here, it's properly set up by factory trained technicians, and the other strength increasing elements that we have in this one is it's designed to run 31 splined axles, um, which the more splines you have, you have more engagement between the differential and the axle itself, so it becomes a stronger coupling. Um, and it also has a performance ringing pinion set that's designed to take heavier use, as well as having a Detroit uh, True Track differential, which is a, um, a differential unit that's also stronger than stock. So that is the reason why we chose this. We chose a 355 rear gear, which kind of worked with our Tremec TKO 600 transmission. And to put this thing together, um, the first thing we did was clean the center section and again, painted that satin black to match the rest of the car. And you drop the center section into the steel housing. And these housings are nice because they are brand new. They build them on a fixture so they're true. You don't have to worry about, you know, sometimes if you get a, a used axle assembly, it might be bent. Uh, you don't have that problem here. Once you get that in place with a gasket and some sealer, uh, we used some jet nuts, which are uh, actually kind of an egg-shaped nut to um, hold that center section into the, uh, the housing. Curry pushes the studs through the housing for you. So you just have to drop the center section on there. The jet nuts are nice because they are a lock nut by design and they'll keep that whole thing together. The rest of the assembly is to install the axles. You apply some lubricant to the axles. Um, these are 31 splined units. We used some Royal Purple um, Max Tough assembly lube on the axles before sliding them into the housing. And Curry does the math so that you get the right length axle with the housing that you choose. And you can get a custom rear end from them. So if you have a car that's got a narrowed rear end or you want to put a different wheel and tire or wheel tubs or something, you can get them the measurements and they'll cut these to length. So that's easily handled by the guys at Curry. Depending on the brake package you use, you might have to slide your axle through a backing plate. In our case, we're using bare disc brakes and their backing plates allow you to have the axles installed and the brake uh, caliper brackets actually retain the axles into the housing and then it all bolts together. So now we know we've got a gear ratio that corresponds with the rest of the driveline design. Uh, we've got a Detroit True Track differential, so it will be a locking differential under load, but the car will not, you know, lurch or have a ratcheting sound around turns because it, it is a true smooth differential. It'll handle a whole bunch of power. Uh, all the parts are new and uh, we should be ready to rock with minimal hassle on the rear axle assembly. There are a couple more variables you can choose from when designing your Curry crate rear axle, uh, and these are the bearing sizes, the kind of U-joint yoke. Uh, there's a couple different sizes you can spec, but Curry makes all of that available on their website at curryenterprises.com, and you can see a uh, configurator to design the ideal rear axle assembly for your car.